we next have Daniel Kahneman, who is probably most of you know, uh, won a Nobel Prize in economics. He's professor emeritus uh, in multiple departments at Princeton, including, I just learned this, in the Woodrow Wilson School, in addition to in psychology. And he's also the author of the best-selling uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, and every time I go to New York, I try to have lunch with him, and he always asks me hard questions. Maybe I'll get to return the favor today. Welcome, Danny. Thank you. Um, I was actually going to talk about counterfactuals and normality, uh, but it was a small talk. I was going to talk to you about how people undo events, which turns out to be a kind of counterfactual that's not the same as causal counterfactual. But listening to the talks of the first session, I decided that I should do something else, slightly more ambitious. Uh, and, and I should talk about two systems. I, I seem to be identified with the idea of two systems, system one and system two, although they're not my idea, but I did write a book that uh, described them. And as quite a few of you I'm sure know, uh, we talk about the contrast between one system that works fast, another that works slow, uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, but the main difference between system one and system two, as I described them, was that system one is something that happens to you. You are not active. The thought that the words come to you, the ideas come to you, the emotions come to you, they happen to you, you do not do them. And the essential distinction that I was drawing uh, between the two system was really that one, uh, something that happens to you and something that you do. High level skills in my description of, of things were absolutely in system one. Anything that we can do automatically, anything that happens associatively is in system one. Uh, another distinction between system one and system two uh, as psychologists see them is that operations of system one tend to be parallel, operations of system two tend to be serial. And I think that this idea of two systems may have been ad adopted uh, more than it should have been. And it seems to have been identified, uh, and that's what prompted me to change my talk today, it seemed to be identified with the distinction between symbolic and non-symbolic, where system one is non-symbolic and system two is symbolic one that does the reasoning. Uh, and there is, I had a very similar view myself when you look at what machine learning does, it reminds you of that black box that produces miraculously and quite fast produces very complicated responses or, or responses in very complicated situations. But I think the mapping is actually seriously imperfect. So it's true that anything, any activity that we would describe as non-symbolic, I think does belong to system one. But system one, I think cannot be described as a non-symbolic system. Uh, for one thing, uh, it's, it's much too complicated and rich for that. It knows language for one thing. Intuitive thoughts are in language. Uh, the most interesting component of system one, the basic component as I conceive of that notion, is that it holds a representation of the world. And, and the representation that actually allows something that resembles a simulation of the world. As I describe it, we, we live with that representation of the world. And most of the time, we are in what I call the valley of the normal. There are events that we positively expect. There are events that surprise us. But most of what happens to us neither surprises us, nor is it expected. What I'm going to, do, to say next will not surprise you, but you didn't actually expect it. So there is that model that compares, that accepts many, many events as normal continuations of what happens, but it rejects some. And it distinguishes what is 
surprising from what is normal. That's very difficult to describe in terms of symbolic or non-symbolic. Certainly what happens is a lot of counterfactual thinking is in fact system one thinking because surprise is something that happens automatically. You're surprised when something that happens is not normal, is not expected. And that forces common sense and causality to be in system one and not in system two. So I wanted just to uh, clarify the language a bit that it seems to me that uh, the association of system two specifically with symbolic and system one with non-symbolic, uh, I really enjoy hearing those two systems mentioned in conversations about AI, but I'm not sure that they're always used as precisely as they should be. Thank you. That was a beautiful explanation. Um, clearest that I've heard you uh, make, make that point.